It's very quiet, very quickly while somebody makes noise. Uh, can can you hear me all? Is it working, Paul? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay, excellent. We can. Okay, the lectern isn't turned on. Do we need to have that turned on? No. No. Okay. Can, hopefully you can hear me. No. No. That, that loudspeaker isn't working. Okay. Uh, test uh, one, two, three, test. Okay. We hear you, Manford, but we're not seeing anything. We are not. Okay. Paul is working on it. Actually, we're trying to fix audio audio in the, the room here. <laughs> okay. 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 Thank you. I need all the help I can get. All right. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank. Thank you for joining uh, in. Your video is off. The video is off, and uh, Paul, can you fix it by any chance? They can't. Uh... Oh, really? Hmm. Oh, yes. we have we have George. Um... Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, it takes a little while to get going. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Manfred, for those of you who don't know me, AG7 and R, chairman of the board. Unfortunately, our president uh, is not able to uh, be here today, so he asked me to run the meeting for him and try to do a good job, keep my fingers crossed. And uh, so uh, the first, first item on our agenda is to uh, have a, a special presentation that David W7DAO will be giving to us. The surprise topic, actually. <laughs> David is our activities manager, as you know, and uh, he's doing the presentation himself uh, today. Yes? We'll do that after the afterwards at the top of the business meeting at 11 o'clock. Got the flag already positioned. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Could you turn the volume up on the microphone? You're pretty quiet. Are we okay? All right, a funny thing way, happened to me on the way to the meeting. Uh, yesterday when I was, uh, Paul was scheduled to do SCR Raspberry Pi today. He is really, really busy, as you can see, doing the job of two people. So we decided to, to switch him up. He'll be going in September. And I said, okay, I'll put something together for today, which I did. And then when I got here and I looked at the memory stick, I realized, I don't know where I saved it, but it got saved to somewhere other than what I'm carrying in my pocket. And because I could give this without the slides, but the topic really lends itself to have some pictures. So, um, and th this is sort of a lesson to me because normally when I do these things, I not only carry a memory stick, I also email the presentations to myself as a backup. Well, don't violate your own rules. That's the, the rule number one. So, however, going to plan C, because there's always another option in my book, is uh, we're going to do a pre-recorded presentation that was given at the QSO, QSO Today conference, so back in 222, 2022, and it's on uh, Rivet, a new digital text messaging mode for UHF and VHF. Um, it's still in its development stage. Um, I just was recently looking at this. Um, it's a acoustically coupled mode which means that although you'll see it acoustically coupled, you can just as well in the future probably just hardwire to from one device to the other. It is for Android right now, as far as I know, it is not for iPhones. So, um, but if you have an Android, and it might be fun to experiment with. So Scott, uh, I bugged him enough today to ask him to take the link and be the presenter of it. And so Scott, whenever you're ready, you can switch over and start it. 
and then um, uh, it'll be about 40 minutes. And after that, we'll switch back to Manfred. Uh, we'll take a he'll, we'll take a break, right? So thank you very much. Last thing I'll say is if you have any subjects you'd like us to present on or like to present, please contact me, your friendly neighborhood activities manager. Okay, thank you, Scott. Take it away. What is Ribbit? Ribbit, a new digital text messaging mode for VHF, UHF emergency communications. Thank you for being here. We've got exciting content to share with you and we think that you're gonna love it. In this 20 minute presentation, Today's agenda will be highlighting the need, why Ribbit, how we do it, where we'll reveal the secret sauce, where we are going, share the vision, and if you stay until the end, you'll get your own giveaway app, a free tech demo app download code. This 20 minute presentation will be followed by a live Q&A where I will join you to answer any question you may have. What is Ribbit? Ribbit is a novel digital text messaging mode for VHF, UHF communication for recreational and emergency use, which radically increases the density of information transmitted by spectrum use. It leverages the computing power of the modern smartphone to increase the capability of any handy talkie without requiring any additional hardware. Its redundant distributed nature allows it to function even when the internet connectivity is lost during emergencies. Ribbit is open source and currently in its early stages of development. About me, I'm Pierre Delieu, Ribbit inventor and lead architect. I got my first ham license in 1998 in France as F4 CKX while studying physics at university. I rejoined the hobby in 2020 as W4 CKX in the US with a focus on emergency communication. I joined the Open Research Institute in 2022 to accelerate Ribbit development. Ribbit is a project of the Open Research Institute. The Open Research Institute is a nonprofit research and development organization which provides all of its work to the general public under the principles of open source and open access to research. Ribbit development team is currently myself, Pierre Delieu, W4CKX, and Ahmed Inan from IECODIX GmbH. If you have some skills that you would like to contribute, get in touch. We'll welcome participation in the project. Why we do it, the need. Cell phone and cellular towers are the default mode of communication for citizens. 
It provides the fastest connectivity, a superior user experience, and multiple modes of communication like search, web, email, chat, text, phone calls and video calls, as well as pictures. It is best in class, 99 plus percent of the time, but it's also a single point of failure. And in less than 1% emergency, cellular can go down for weeks. The infrastructure can fail and large population are without communications for days and weeks. Example for, uh, an example is hurricanes. A study from the FCC shows that about 1,000 cell towers were knocked out during Hurricane Katrina. And more recently, Hurricane Harvey knocked out more than 360 cell towers, which is 75% of Puerto Rico's cellular network. Think about the time it takes to rebuild a thousand cell tower. It's not a few days, it's weeks and months. Likewise, wildfires, fiber optics cables melt and towers burn, the King K defier and PG&E power shutdown impacted 900 of California's cell sites. They were not operating. And in example, in Marin County, 57% of the network was down. And more recently last year, full cellular restoration in tornado ravaged Kentucky is expected to take months. In this situation, the amateur radio emergency service operators are on the air to assist communications. This works extremely well for short periods of a few hours to several days. It's much harder to sustain over days and weeks. Maintaining a flow of communication with hundreds of people over a long period of time is challenging. There's a need to overcome operator fatigue, handling numerous concurrent subject and issues, remembering earlier subject and issues, issue of memory over time, transcribing everything in writing, transferring context information to the next net control operator, sharing workload among different operators, and communicating exact location of assets or message provenance. VHF, UHF voice mode has limitations. How can we support RS volunteers? We can provide them with modern text messaging capabilities to work alongside voice communications on the same frequencies and local repeater infrastructure. Text messaging is complementary to voice, real-time tactical awareness of the situation, it's time-stamped and geocoded messages. It brings message history and forward capabilities and requires no additional hardware because it's just an app. Text can do more. The benefits of Rebit text over VHF UHF. Again, Rebit text and regular voice cohabit on the same frequencies. The benefits of Rebit text messages is a high level view of all messages geolocation of every messages, ability to copy paste, therefore no transcription error, workload sharing across multiple operators, complete history, respond to a message, and it only takes one second to transmit. Text does more. How we do it, the implementation. How to use your cell on the VHF UHF ham bands? Well, even without cellular connectivity, you still maintain capabilities in your smartphone. You have a large screen with a touch interface and keyboard input, high compute power, large memory, and with the receiver GPS inside your cell, you will get exact time and exact location. Finally, you have a speaker and a microphone. And if you take a regular HT, any HT, it gives you UHF, UHF analog transceiver, a voice activated transmit box mode, which is not required, but it's uh, nice to have, and also a speaker and microphone. And if you look at the lowest common denominator between these two pieces of hardware, we actually are targeting transmission of data through acoustic coupling between the speaker and the microphone. And this requires no hardware and no cable. This is the technical part, how to transmit data reliably via acoustic coupling. And I will share two slides. The room around you, where you're gonna operate the two devices, has multiple paths for the sound to propagate, which causes multiple echo in the microphone. 
this multipath echo is creating intersymbol interference. To deal with multipath, we use orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, multi-carrier modulation. One drawback is that it gives us a lesser than ideal peak to average power ratio compared to a single carrier system. The workaround is that we leverage quadrature phase shift keying to modulate the carrier and slightly manipulate the amplitude of each carrier to improve PAPR to the point of making the whole system robust and practical. Unlike voice transmission where noise is without consequences, in a digital transmission noise is detrimental. Therefore, we use forward error correction code and more specifically BCH code for the call sign header and systematic polar code for the text payload. Here I'm going to give you a demo of message transmission uh, of Ribbit. So in the current setup you can see the phone has an app, and in that app, the microphone is constant, continuously listening for Ribbit messages. Then you will see a message received by the HD, and you will see the message instantly decoded in the app and displayed on the screen. I will play the video recording two times. And again. So here we were able to see that the text message can be transmitted extremely fast over acoustic coupling. The benefit of our implementation is that the digital text audio transmission survived the path from the first smartphone through the first HD throughout an analog DHF UHF transmission with or without analog repeater to a second HD out in audio coupling to the last smartphone number two. And this can go over an AM modulation, FM modulation or single sideband. But also it can survive Bluetooth audio compression and transcoding. So that is analog audio re-converted uh, into the digital Bluetooth and back to analog. It can also survive YouTube auto compression and transcoding. Where we are going or vision. The look and feel for Ribbit is a blend of different uh, services that we use every day. So Ribbit messages are public, kind of like Twitter. Ribbit messages are sortable by hashtag, kind of like Reddit. It allows discussion by common themes. Ribbit messages can be sent and retrieved over the air, so it feels like your 1990s built-in board system. And a unique feature is that Ribbit messages are grid square geocoded, therefore filtering message by local proximity is possible and highly advised. I will now talk about the future Ribbit system architecture once deployed. You can see in the bottom corner uh, the coupling of smartphone and HDs through acoustic coupling or Bluetooth coupling. And you can see that uh, cell phones are connected to cell towers on the backbone internet to the Ribic cloud application. And on the analog side, HDs are connected to local repeaters. And on this local repeater, we actually look uh, running a local Ribbit server node. I will highlight the functions of these two parts. The Ribbit cloud application supervises the network health and status and statistics. It keeps track of message sensor received, but just the headers. It doesn't keep track of message content. It's there to give you a high level view of the health of the system. The local Ribbit server is installed on the local repeater and continuously listens on the repeater for Ribbit messages. It stores about one year of message with 64 gigabyte of storage on a Raspberry Pi. Anyone can request the last 50 messages by sending a request code. It's a sort of store on forward mechanism. And it's synchronized with other server in a redundant peer-to-peer -peer message replication when the internet access is active, but acts at a local, uh, it acts as a local node when the internet connectivity is down. In conclusion, where we are today. We have a robust implementation for digital text over analog audio 
and we're still in the early stage of development. Our next step is to focus on RS group needs and user experience and feature to radically enhance their situational awareness and communication capabilities. This will be done in the Ribbit app. Later, we will focus on developing the cloud application server. If you have cloud development skills and want to join the project, please contact us. Demo app. Thank you for hanging out with us. Here's your free tech demo download. So try Rebit today. You can download the following app. It's called Rattlegram, and it's on the Google Play Store. You can scan the QR code. Why is the app not called Ribbit? Well, we reserve the Ribbit name when the app will be ready for general release. This is only a tech demo, but that's enough for you to install on two smartphones and use your HTs through repeaters or in a simplex mode, and you will be able to transmit text from one HT to the other and see for yourself the performance of our implementation. Thank you very much for your attention today. It's a pleasure to have you uh, in this presentation. Get in touch if uh, you have any feedback or you want to contribute to the project. We appreciate uh, you getting to us. And I will join you on the other side for question and answers beginning now. Uh, and don't forget to download your tech demo. If you want to well, you can ask it. You can already order. So if one of these becomes a question, we can you know hang out and get. We're deciding what to do about questions here. Well, then you can't just first. You can't but but I'm trying to say yeah. Watch somebody ask. Yeah, what I'm trying to say is we can, this is recorded so we can watch people ask questions or we can just stop the presentation and move on to the meeting now. I'm just looking to see which way you would like to go or we even have a small short discussion without going the Q&A that's recorded on, on this and we can just sort of talk about it. It's up to you guys. Uh, the presentation will be, and I will send out a link for it so you can actually read it. If you go to YouTube and go QSO today and read it, ribbit, ribbit, um, or just search ribbit at, on YouTube, you'll see three or four presentations they've they've done. One with the rat, was it Rat Pack, which is a pretty large library of videos. Uh, but I'll put that out there. Uh, any other questions? Do you do you have to use any? Do you have to use a smartphone as your ask? The, the answer is right now, they, it is only an Android app. They do have plans in the future, as far as I know, to go to an iOS app, but right now it's Android only. The app handles all the, you, you saw the forward error, forward error correction, the uh, quadrature um, modulation, it handles all that decoding and that's just simple text. However, when I looked at this, I, it seemed very obvious that the next extension is that going from your cell phone to send text out as normal text and back out the phone would be a logical thing that would happen sometime in the future in the yeah, development. No, no, no. Well, you know, sometimes it's time to upgrade. <laughs> yeah, he was he was saying he was saying he doesn't have a smartphone, he has a dumb phone. And, and I was suggesting it's time to upgrade. Go ahead. There's some other questions. Okay, there, let's go ahead and go ahead. And, and as you suggested, let's hear the first five or 10 minutes of questions. If it's going somewhere constructive, we'll stay on it. If it's not, then we can move on. Okay. All right, thanks. Go ahead, Scott. <laughs> No. We will take questions now. Uh, I already see um, Michael K6GTE is asking what's the symbol rate. Uh, symbol rate, um, because these are OFDM symbols, um, they, are, uh, they take a long time and it's around 180 milliseconds. So you have uh, about five to six symbols per second. Yeah, you have been recalled. <laughs> uh.
Dan Romantic uh, KB6NU is asking, my Android phone doesn't have GPS. Will Ribbit still work on this phone? Uh, yeah, please answer. Yeah, I'll take this one. So um, I think all phones have a GPS uh, receiver built in. I mean, only maybe even $20 or $30 entry level phone have GPS in it. So you may not be aware, but if you click location on, you will have a location calculation on your phone. Now, if it would be a phone that doesn't have GPS for privacy reason, what will happen is that your grid square geolocation will be degraded and the statistics of your connection uh, will become loose. So if you activate your location in normal mode, it will actually start to show sort of a, a map of connectivity around a repeater and around your HD. So you start to know your range and how you get healthy connectivity through UHF or VHF. If you disable uh, accurate location, then your grid square will, will default to unknown or a very large grid and all these statistics will become junk. So you'll still be able to use the transmit function, but in an emergency, you want to uh, broadcast where you are because the first responders needs, need, need to be able to get to you. So that's why we got location in there. Next, next question, um, Dan W9STS is asking when it will be available for iPhone. And I would say that uh, it depends uh, how many people are interested in this. And uh, if uh, somebody's um, starting to sponsor us, then uh, we will pay the price that you have to pay to start developing iPhone apps. And then we will do that. But until then, um, I think it will be uh, only Android limited for now. The question is whether do you need internet or cloud or can it work without? Um, thank you. I'll take this one. So. The, the, the beauty of the implementation is that it's using the internet when it's available 99% of the time. And so what happened is that while you transmit message on Ribbit, you could actually not use your HT. And if you got cellular, it's going to sync. And the, the benefit of that is that it brings the feature set on parity with the user experience that people are used to on the cell phone. So you can go on to your local node and for example say i've got uh stuff for sale so you list all the gear that you don't need and you got a new ham operator and say let me look by proximity what can i find for gear or i need to borrow a cable for a day or something like that and that it encourage local face-to-face uh, -face, uh, people to meet actually what happened is uh, to keep your ribbit uh, profile active it requires for RS operator to do one Ribbit packet transmission through HF, so through VHF, UHF, once per week when they do their, um, you know, net control meetings. And for general people is to do it once per month. For as long as you uh, send a message on the analog side once per month, you stay active on the on the on the system. And so. The reason for that once per month uh, analog thing is that we want to encourage people uh, preparedness and uh, operational skills to be up and ready. So that means your HT is in a state of charge that it's uh, adequate. At least you have half a battery. And so in case of emergency, then you're ready. So that, that's the purpose behind it. Now, once you move to analog side, what you will see is that the transmission of message is going to take a few seconds. So um like you type your message on your on the text of your cell phone it's ready to send there's two techniques either you're fairly uh, in a room that's fairly silent you can use vox mode so when you press uh, send on your phone it will open the squelch and uh, transmit the message the other technique is i call it the fast finger is it pretty much like you press ptt and then you press uh, send on the smartphone like a quarter a second or half a second after and that's also works just fine uh, and then the message will be sent, takes about a second, a second and a half. And then uh, if there is uh, internet connectivity, your receipt acknowledgement will go through the cloud. 
So the Rebit server or the simplex person that receives your message on Rebit, the header will go to the cloud application server and go back to the first cell phone. And then you'll get your acknowledge receipt check, uh, kind of like on your text message that your mes test message has been transmitted. If the receiving station doesn't have internet connectivity, it will send you a Rebit packet acknowledgement. And so you will receive within the next uh, few seconds after you send your packet, a chirp. And that uh, Rebit chirp will contain the header and the checksum to acknowledge that the entire message has been uh, adequately received with uh, the, the full decoding. So it works with and without. And uh, the most important thing is that you promote an infrastructure that is exactly replicating uh, the organization structure Ham Radio Obi. So you have all Ham operators, they can access the Rebit app. There's zero barrier to entry because it's free. Everybody's got a smartphone and an HT. So we really uh, foresee to have a very broad user base. And then uh, we put the responsibility on uh, uh, radio clubs to uh, upgrade their antenna with a repeater server, a Rebit, uh, a Rebit server. And what happened is that in normal times, you just have that kind of chat feature and uh, message boards and knowledge base. But when the emergency comes up, then you really have, you know, uh, a full text messaging uh, feature implementation that's uh, ready to roll when an uh, emergency comes. All right. Thank you. Um, David has a couple of questions. The first one you already answered, which is, is it planned yeah. to be iOS also? The second one is, can it um, load on a Chrome notebook? And the third one is really interesting, which is, will the application automatically select routing, cell, or VF check, or does it do both? I can ask, I already did answer the iOS question. Uh, yeah. it's, it's the same like with the iPhone. Um, if there are uh, enough people interested and um, some m money is uh, uh, streaming in, then uh, we can pay uh, all the upfront costs to develop iPhone applications. And then I will um, see no problem to have an iPhone app and also support it in the future. Uh, but at the moment, it's really just Android limited. And um, the second question was, uh, uh, if it runs on a Chrome notebook, um, uh, since uh, a few years now, um, it's uh, possible to start uh, Android apps on the Chrome notebook, but I haven't tested it yet, but uh, I tested it for my older applications and it works just fine. So I don't think that there will be a problem. So, um, and uh, also I can test it uh, again. So uh, uh, if there's any problem, I will fix that and then uh, it will be no problem. So, and the uh, uh, last question, uh, maybe Pierre, you want to answer it? Yeah. So I, I can I explain the architecture how it routes message uh, between cell or VHF. So I will reiterate. Uh, if you let's say you've done your uh, VHF packet transmission, Rebit transmission, and your uh, normal user, your credentials will be valid for a month. So for a month, you can text uh, from anywhere on your cell phone on cellular connectivity without any VHF packet transmission. Uh, after one month, you'll start to see the, the prompt that will tell you uh, you need to do a VHF packet to reactivate your credential. Now, it doesn't block you, but it, it, it actually will have a banner that stays there constantly until you do your VHF transmission. And what it is, is that now on the cloud server, we got statistics that shows the state of read uh, readiness of the entire ham radio population. So you say, uh, how many have been connected through VHF in the last seven days? And that's for emergency response teams. And then how many uh, sync through VHF over the last 30 days or more? And we see these statistics going up and down. And that allows us to actually promote and do outreach. And then education through the cell phone apps that you need to connect because in terms of emergency, you need to be ready. And uh, practice makes perfect. So taking out your HT, transmitting some packets is a, is a good thing to do. Now, it's not just, you know, transmitting some packets as, a, uh, as an upkeep or an effort. The thing that people don't see, and that's going to be something for a future presentation, is that Rebit opens up a tons of recreational capabilities. So start to think, uh, summit on the air, when somebody comes with a directional VHF antenna, and collects Rebit packets, and so transmit Rebit's message 
down the valley to a maximum number of operators. Because the messenger geocoded, all the statistics of your QSOs are automatically logged in the app. So you got a very, very sleek user interface that allows you to do your activities. And we, we're looking forward to do an API uh, connectivity to the on the air uh, website and likewise for park on the air. So you can start to do POTA, SOTA, Rebit packets. You can also start sending Rebit packets over AMSATs and uh, currently satellite pass when you do your ra radio transmission, the, the voice, uh, how long it takes to um, tell your, um, um, sorry, your call sign and then get the acknowledgement and back it takes about 10, 12 seconds. You could actually have more packets go through the satellites and increase the bandwidth and capacity of the satellite transmission by just chirping, you know, repeat message. So you could see that uh, functionality evolve and really have your AMSAT passes forecasting the ribbit message and only chirp the message when the satellite is exactly above you, you know, for maximum and best transmission. So there's a lot of things that can be done on that new capability. And, uh, and so we're very excited. Yeah. Next so question. I'm sorry. Yeah, go for it. So the next question is from Jeffrey. What method is used to determine when the RF channel is clear to transmit? So that is your own ears. <laughs> Same as with voice, uh, voice audio. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop it here. I think some of the questions are getting redundant. Um, anyone have any comments online or or uh, press online? Anyone have any comments about what they've seen? Um, just opening that up. Uh, Tom's got a question in the, uh, in the audience here. No, I was just wondering. Okay, so this was September of uh, twenty, so we're now seven or eight nine months from then. Uh, have we heard any more about uh, the development, uh, especially uh, the uh, uh, iOS aspect of it, since the majority of people have iOS instead of Android? And me being one of those. So I just started looking from what I can see. Of iOS, it continues on the Android to progress. Um, uh, I've, you know, I have an Android, but it's for business, so I don't put anything non-business on it. So I have considered, gee, you know, maybe it's time for me to get, since there's a lot of stuff, uh, is it time for me to get a dumb Android? Uh, maybe not cellular. Yes, Dave. Oh, Dave's gotten ahead of me. All right, great. Special. It's in a special thing called test flight. So you have to do the weird test flight stuff, whatever you Apple people do. And I know, and I know after you bought your iDevices, you don't have any money left to donate to that poor guy. But it's in test flight. So if you you might need to learn that in. good. I think that was a, a paid political announcement from Samsung. Um, <laughs> any other <laughs> Google, sorry. Uh, any other comments or or um, at all online or here in the room? Okay, so that's great. Thank you for listening and, and thank you. Apologize for it wasn't the presentation I was going to do today, but I will do that later and I'm sure you'll find this one more interesting. Manfred will be doing his special, you know, I've got the best satellite tracking system in the world lecture uh, <laughs> in, in October. Paul will be doing the R high uh, presentation. And again, if you have a subject you'd like to present, please contact me or a subject you'd like us to present on, please contact me. So with that, back to Manfred. Okay, thank you, David, for organizing the presentation today. So I think uh, at this point, take a break and uh, reconvene. Um, let's see, 11 o'clock, is that too late or should we start the general meeting earlier? 10 till? Okay. At uh, 10 minutes before 11, we'll reconvene. That gives you time uh, for get coffee and chat and whatnot. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>